All right, hey guys, this is Think Outside the Cube, and I want to show you our new car we got. If you haven't noticed or you haven't seen our Facebook page, then this is going to be the replacement to the Fusion. The Fusion's actually gone now. Dad went to the gym and he took the Fusion to keep the miles off this babe, I guess. But this is our 2014 Nissan Altima SV. It's um, in metal or steel metal metallic. It's the grayish silver color. It was the only color we could all agree on. Um, Dad wanted the Barcelona red. And I don't know. That, I think that's um, Toyota's red. But he wanted the metallic red. And I wanted the um, like Java brown color. But we all agreed on liking the, the dark gray. So, I, like I said, this is going to be the replacement for the Fusion. This, is, this isn't this is going to be the full tour. This is just going to be the um, updating the subscribers type deal. As you can see, those 17-inch wheels do come standard on the, the SV model. And coming back up to the front, going for an SL will get you fog lights because these right here are just um, your blinkers. But uh, convenience package on the SV will also get you fog lights. Um, it's very fluidic design, but it's not too bad like a Sonata. Um, this one does have a few options on it. This one has the mud flaps. It has um, door body side moldings. I didn't really want them. Dad wanted them. They're kind of 90s-ish, as Brooks said. But um, they're on the way. They're on the way from the factory. They didn't have any on the lot with them. And it has the rear cargo mat, which I'll show you later, and the storage organizer and first aid kit and roadside assistance kit. So we'll go ahead and come inside. It does have smart key. I don't have the key on me, it's inside. And as you can see, we chose the um, charcoal black cloth interior. Okay, welcome and start it up put your foot on the brake you can see we have a whopping 35 miles and an awesome new car smell let me get the key the key is typical nissan egg but um it does have remote start lock and unlock and hold for trunk so there is um two more buttons than the q key has pardon me but, um, yeah, so those, those buttons are pretty small compared to the Fusion one. But, yeah, since the engine started, we'll go ahead and pop the hood. Go ahead and check out what's under the, the hood of this power house of a car. Hi, Phyllis. She's sunbathing, I guess. All right, this is Nissan's 2.5 liter inline four-cylinder. It has 183 horsepower and 180 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to a modified CVT transmission for 2013. And putting regular gas in it will achieve 2738, which is class-leading MPGs. Now what really brought us towards the Altima were the incentives Nissan was offering with it. Okay, first of all, you got a $5,000 rebate from the factory on any Altima because we actually were shopping used Altimas. Um, we were going to get a used SL or SV. It was um 2013 model. And when we actually called the Nissan dealer that had the certified SL Altima that we were looking at, they said, well, you can get into a brand new one for the price that you're going to get for the used one. So we went ahead and we started looking, and this one was actually bought at Deacon Jones Nissan in Goldsboro. So yeah, Dad's really pleased with it. I really like the styling too. It's our budget infinity, as I like to say. Now coming back inside, go ahead, door materials soft touch soft touch and this is actually soft touch this isn't the um cloth covered plastic like in the the toaster over there you do have 
all power windows, automatic up and down for the driver only, which the Fusion had all, auto for all, power locks, window lockout, and your power mirrors. To the right of that, you have panel dim, trip, reset, traction, and trunk release, and your fuel door, which I'll go ahead and pop that, and your hood, which we already seen. Your left stalk will have your automatic headlight controls and your tap to three blanks blinkers. On the right stalk will have your in intermittent speed wipers, which are not minivan wipers, thank God. On this funny looking steering wheel, I just think it's funny looking. It is leather wrapped. You do have controls for the display up there. Um, volume controls for your stereo. Cruise controls and Bluetooth controls up here. There's no controls on the back because this isn't a Chrysler product, obviously. To the right of that, you do have your push button start, which is the same type of um, button that's on the cube. It's not the one from the last generation. And if the key actually dies, you just, there's a magnet in the end of it, and you just like wave it over the button, like in the cube. The last generation Ultima actually had a slot you would put it in. And that actually charged it too. Coming to your head unit, this is the upgraded unit that you get on the SV and the SL. On the SL, you can upgrade to the navigation package, which you can also get on the SV. I forgot to mention. This has FM, AM, XM, USB, and AUX switchers down here, and your felt lined electronic pocket. Dad's pink auxiliary cable that gave him when the, he bought the car. You also have apps. Um, to be compatible with your smartphone, obviously, connected via via Bluetooth. Right now, I've only used Pandora, and it's actually a really good interface, but it did fail one time. I had to just restart the car, which that wasn't too bad of a hassle. Below that is your dual zone automatic climate controls, which I won't turn on, just do, um, since I'm videoing, I don't want it to interfere. And below that, I've already showed you, is your illuminated felt-lined pocket where you can keep your, um, your iPod and all that kind of crap. As you can see, it does have this, like, black type, um, glossy wood, fake wood finish. I like it better than the, the glossy plastic, which was in the Fusion. Right here is your modified CVT transmission. Um, you do have a D Sport mode, which simulates gears, because I did drive this and did an, a little acceleration run, you know, popping with dad in the front seat, you know, and it, um, it was actually really good. It wasn't too bad. It's, it simulates a seven speed, if I'm not mistaken, and putting it in reverse will display a backup camera with guidance lines, just like in the cube. Beside that, you have dual cup holders, which are um, thank goodnessly, I guess, spaced well enough where they won't, like, bang. Right here, you have a storage pocket where you can put your phone or something, and you would also have heated seat controls if you got the SL. Beside that, you have your padded center console that is dual tier. Dad probably doesn't need to put his coins there. Um, to the right of that, you can passenger seat, obviously. Here's your glove box, it is three tiers. Owner's manual up there, then your regular storage, and then you've got a little pocket right here. You also can deactivate the trunk right here if you're doing valet parking. Now up on the dash, you do have soft touch materials on this first layer right here. It comes all the way down around here, right over here. And then it's also over here, but this upper piece is hard plastic. As I forgot to mention, this is a seven speaker audio system um you can upgrade to the nine speaker bose premium head unit when you get the technology package okay the steering wheel does tilt and telescope looking above the steering wheel you do have a mirror and vanity light visor you have sunglasses storage right here uh led lights and um stuff to control like if the lights come on when the doors open you also do have on this side, mirror and vanity light. And on the SL, you get home link, which I think that's really stupid. Nissan makes you get really higher trims to get home link. But all um, other passengers do have, oh shoot, took a corner too fast handles, and they are damped. You do have a manual dimming rear view mirror. You do get auto dimming on the SL. 
All right, let's go ahead and head to the back seat. Now the back seat of the Altima is actually really spacious. It's not best in class. If you want best in class legroom, go for a Passat. Um, I think Sonata is larger and so on and so forth. Behind your NASA inspired seats, you can have, you have a seat pocket with a hard backing on both sides. You do not have air vents and you do not have a power point. That is a downgrade from the Fusion. Now on your door panel, you do have a soft touch upper door panel, soft touch armrest, your uh, window control, power window control, and your chrome door handle. Everything follows through. And below that, you even have a bottle holder and some storage that goes back in your speaker. To the right of you, you can see you do have a plush center armrest with two generous cup holders that does fold up and down. You do have belts for three. And above that, you can see your non-adjustable headrest, which is extremely stupid for a mid-size sedan. Um, even a Versa SV gives you adjustable headrest, so I don't understand why they omitted that. When you get leather in the SL, they make the headrest adjustable. I don't, I don't know why they don't like. They, this was on the last generation, also the non-adjustable headrest. As you can see, the center hump isn't too big. I'd say it's about three inches off, so that's not too bad, and it's pretty wide. So if you needed to, you could fit both feet up there. Sorry about that. I just ran out of memory, but on um, right here, you can log out the seat folding mechanism. And this part is padded over here as well, so it's not hard plastic. Back here, it is hard plastic, which I'm glad that it doesn't have that, like that mouse fur carpet. And for those of you that actually care about headliners, this, this one is very plush and soft and nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and head farther to the back. Hey, Phyllis, how you do? How you do? Okay, here's your gas cap. No easy fill or anything, just peasantly open the, open the gas cap and stuff. There's your third brake light. Pure drive. Ooh. <laughs> if I can find the trunk release right here we go. All right, as you can see, we do have a lined trunk lid with little Jimmy getting locked out prevention tool or whatever. So these things are to pull down your 60-40 uh, rear seats. You can see you do have gooseneck hinges that will crush your cargo if it's in the way. As you can see, it's a pretty large trunk and it's not so oddly shaped as the Fusion was. Let me take this out right quick to show you the organizer thing. So it's underneath right here. Here's your organizing tool, first aid kit, um, roadside assistance kit, and below that would be your uh, temporary spare tire and jack. All right. Okay, and one thing that the Fusion had that the Altima doesn't have is an inside pull handle. You've got to get your hands dirty and close the trunk. That rattle was this this plate frame, and it says, are you speaking, Deacon? Obviously, we bought the car from you guys. That was a stupid question. But um, that will conclude the video of our new 2014 Altima SV. Leave any more videos you want to see on it below. I probably, the full tour will be later on. I will be doing um, a setup video for not so much you guys, but just people in general on YouTube that don't know how to connect their phone to the head unit and use apps and stuff. So I will be doing that in the near future. The next video you guys are actually going to see is, I've already edited it, but I felt like Alta video needed to go out before it is the um, snowy cold start of the, the cube because here in the south with our bipolar weather, we got about, a f I wouldn't say a foot, probably half a foot of snow a few weeks ago. So that'll be it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.